Hello YouTube. Today we are going to be doing my, I can't pick just one, so we're going to be doing my two favourite movies and my two worst ever in the world movies. I do apologise for the brightness, this is the reason why I don't do my videos in the daytime, because even though my curtains are shut, it's too bright. So let's crack on anyway. Right, we're going to start with my favourite movie of all time, number one. Hatchet! I love Hatchet! I love it so much! I love Adam Green, the director and writer and everything else. He's amazing. I love this movie. Um, the main reason why I love this movie is because I think it's a standout movie. I mean, come on, you must have seen this movie by now if you're a horror fan. I mean, it's got Tony Todd, Robert England and Kane Hodder in it. Come on, people! This is a brilliant movie. And this came out in 2006 and they did make a sequel and the sequel sucks really badly, but we're, I'm not going to go into that today. I mean, I might even make another movie just about the sequel because it's awful. But this one is brilliant. The script is brilliant, the jokes are funny, and the gore and horror is good. And they keep it separate, which is what a lot of films don't do. They kind of make the horror funny, and it's not supposed to be, but they keep the jokes and the horror separate in this, which I like a lot. And um, as you all know, I tend to ramble quite a bit, so I'll try and keep the plot of this pretty simple. But um, basically the plot of this one is there is a new uh, horror icon named Victor Crowley in the uh, swamps. I'm not quite sure exactly where. I think it's uh, where they hold Mardi Gras. New Orleans, that's it, New Orleans. It's Mardi Gras. We've got Joel Moore, Dion Richmond. Funny little group. Um, Mercedes McNabb. It's uh, basically about um, a little swamp tour group and consisting of um, you know two girls that want to be in porn films the sleazy director you've got the two tourists you know the kind of hick tourists you've got the mysterious hick girl and then you've got Joel Moore and Dion Richmond who would just crack me up every time I see this movie it's just so funny and they're kind of like the comic relief slash um, heroes of the movie and basically they go on this illegal swamp tour and um, enter into the uh, famous Victor Crowley swamps and it's illegal to go there you're not supposed to go there but they go there one night on this tour and surprise surprise Victor Crowley actually exists and he picks them off one by one and I love this movie it's so good I honestly seriously look look go buy this movie it's amazing and it really is it's not a remake it's not a sequel and it's not based on the Japanese one perfect Adam Green this was his first major movie and um, it almost didn't get made and I'm so glad that it did and he went on to direct and write Frozen as well with uh, Kevin Seggers that's an amazing movie in fact I don't think I can ever watch that again because it was so emotionally powerful and it really disturbed me in a in a good way but um oh man yeah go check that one out as well Frozen that's brilliant right that's my number one my number one worst movie of all time has got to be The Possessed. Just don't buy this. Just don't even, you know what? I don't know why I should, don't even look at it. It's awful. This is actually, funny enough, this is actually really hard to find out about, like information wise. I mean, don't get me wrong, I have actually watched it since I bought it a couple of years ago. But I thought I'd do a little bit of research so I know what I'm talking about just a bit more from just what I remember from this because it's not very memorable and the bits I remember I wish I didn't but for, the only thing I could really find out about it online would be the year that it was made and stuff like that and just a couple of people who were in it. It was made in 2007 and this shouldn't happen to a movie that was only made in 2007 it shouldn't be this bad I mean I went to college and I did film in college this looks like a film I could have made. I'm no filmmaker and I could have made a better film than this. And that's saying something. That's quite a hard thing to say about yourself. But yeah, it actually looks like it was filmed on a college, like just a handheld camera. Now, I'm not talking Blair Witch style -y. I'm talking we don't have enough money for a proper camera style -y. It's ridiculous how bad this film is. And it's not really got a plot. I mean, it's, the plot is questionable. The plot is um, it centres around this band, there's four or five members in the band and the lead singer is a depressed girl and in the first sort of ten minutes she kills herself. The film is about her ghost coming back and um, kind of possessing them but she doesn't really do that, she just possesses one of the band members and then the band member goes around acting all 
like all weird and they're like what's wrong with you she's like oh nothing god i've gone really gray there i'm trying to sort that out there we go <laughs> some color again but yeah that's pretty much it she just kind of goes around looking freaky for a bit and i think she only manages to kill one person but then her ghost kind of comes back anyway and I'm not impressed with the actual disc that I had because I got that. I spent £2 on that disc and I got it from like one of those second hand places. I'm just browsing and I thought, oh, that looks kind of, that looks really shit, but I'll buy it anyway. Maybe it'll be good because the cover looks pretty all right. Don't be fooled by the graphics. The graphic design is misleading, okay, people? It really is. And I thought, okay, and because it was used. Who the hell resells stuff that doesn't even work? This movie skips at a, quite a crucial point in the movie. Like, there's a there's an actual there's an actual couple of minutes of action in this movie, like serious action where there may be some ghostly killings, and it skips and it cuts to right after all the action happened. And I was like, sorry, where did that character go? Now there's blood on the why is there blood on the ceiling? I can't believe it skipped right there where the only decent looking bit happened. I was not impressed. You know what? Screw that, I'm not talking about it anymore. Right, number two, my second favourite movie of all time. This one actually trumps Hatchet in a way because this is I fell in love with this first. This will always be my favourite movie. But obviously people change their minds, which is why I've got two. You know, it happens. Ginger Snaps. I love Ginger Snaps. I love Catherine Isabel and Emily Perkins anyway. Because Emily Perkins is in my favourite Stephen King movie, as you all know, which is It. So I've loved Emily Perkins forever. But look, I love Ginger Snaps so much. And it's got Chris Lynch in it, who was in My Little Eye. And he was in a few other things as well. He's, I think, mainly sort of Canadian-based independent movies. I think a bunch, they're mainly all in, this is a Canadian movie. They're all in sort of Canadian-based movies. Um, although I did see another Cinderella story with Selena Gomez once. I saw like half that. And they, these two are in it as like the ugly stepsisters. I don't know what that was about. Seriously, shame on whoever got them to do that. And slight, even though I love them, slight shame on them for doing it. I don't like it. Anyway, yeah, Ginger Snaps is a. It's mainly a werewolf movie. I'm not too loving of werewolf movies. I prefer vampire movies. I don't really like zombie movies that much either. But I like. I don't. You know, sometimes they're good. But um, I love this movie because it's. It's kind of a werewolf movie and kind of a coming of age movie. Ginger, Catherine Isabel, Ginger gets bitten or kind of scratched by a werewolf but no one really sort of, it's not known that there's a werewolf on the loose. They live in a really sort of small town, American town. Um, they're two sisters who are so morbid it's not even funny. They in fact have a suicide pact. I think they talk bollocks a lot of it but you know they're really, they're the morbid ones in the town and people don't like them. They're only like a year apart. Um, and you know it sort of starts off with them playing a prank on one of their uh, sort of tormentors and while they're out in the middle of the night Ginger gets attacked by an actual werewolf and Bridget her sister Emily Perkins um, sort of saves her brings her home Chris Lemch is the local drug dealer <laughs> he's like the local druggy kid he then um, he's driving through the night and he hits the werewolf and kills it sees the girls running away and that's kind of how they end up getting connected during the rest of the film um, but yeah, the, the film is basically about how Ginger, uh, they're both growing up, they're like 15, 16, and they're both kind of going through puberty, obviously getting the periods and things like that. So um, yeah, it's basically, she's becoming a werewolf, but is she really? Because her symptoms are very similar to sort of girls growing up. So you're not, you're never really sure if it's just kind of her going through something. And Bridget, of course, like that's her, like her her twin almost you know it's her other arm it's they're so close so when ginger goes through this transformation and this sort of horrible time she doesn't know what to do and the, and she has to break out of this little twosome and and involve someone else to try and solve the problem and she kind of becomes more independent and really strong and one of my favorite quotes of all time is from the sequel there are three of these movies it's a trilogy the third one was awful i don't know why they made that but i still love all of it the second one's okay, and my favourite quote of all time from any movie comes from the second one, and that's from um, Bridget. Uh, she starts seeing Ginger again, and Ginger says something like, um, in fact, actually, I'm not going to tell you because then it kind of gives away the ending of the first one. 
maybe I'll do like a ginger snaps review and then like um yeah I don't know I don't really want to say what I kind of do because it's such a great quote uh, maybe I'll just write it down and then you can read <laughs> I don't know uh, yeah anyway so that's pretty much that's ginger snaps and uh, it's, it's a really really good film it's, it's got a lot of um, basic gore you know there's nothing spectacular there's no like real massive kill scenes or anything it's just kind of you know but the transformation her transforming is brilliant because it's in stages you know like she starts getting a little bit of a tail and then her teeth start growing and her hair starts going gray in places and it gets more and more and more and Bridget doesn't know what to do about it and she tries to find a cure um, it's a really good film you should check it out and the ending is amazing because it just oh, it really gets you if you're you know if you're really into that kind of stuff it'll get you um, yeah so that's favorite movie number two and last but not least awful 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 movie this is actually and I can you know what this isn't even me saying this this is the movie saying this worst movie of all time number two demon cop now you're looking at me going what the hell is demon cop good for you you shouldn't know what this movie is no one should know what this movie is I didn't know what this movie was until I think it was last year I bought this at Christmas last year I went to the Rochester film uh, Christmas festival and uh, they had and the first thing I did when I found out I was going was I went online and looked up where they sell DVDs because I wanted to know if they had a DVD store there they don't but they do have a, a very small shop called stars and they they sell DVDs in there but I think they're second hand I think everything in there is second hand except for like the artwork they sell so it's like people have gone in there and gone here's a DVD have it and they've just put it up in their window I got this for three pound I love buying crappy movies though I do love them because the way I see it is even though it's a crap film someone took the time to make that so I think I should watch it I think someone should see them even though they're shit but this isn't even me can you see this probably the worst film you'll ever see it says it right there and the whole like all of this is taking the piss out of how bad the film is it basically even says right here in this one sentence it says probably the first film you'll ever see and it looks like it was put together in a potting shed and it only entertained seven people six of those were in the cast and the seventh was a lonely australian intent on suicide that's on the fucking, that's on the fucking dvd cover Oh, I couldn't honestly tell you what the plot is because the first time I watched it I fell asleep four times I, I remember waking up every now and again and I just kept and I just sort of it but I did force myself to watch it once I can't do it again it's awful and it's the general plot is that it's a cop who is killing people there is a killer on the loose there's a, a few there's only about what like, sort of seven characters in this whole film and they're trying to figure out who's the murderer what's the murderer the murderer is clearly not a man it's an animal i don't know why it's called demon cop there is no demon in this he is more of a werewolf type when you do see him in his kind of because he is human and then he sort of transforms every now and again it's like one of those werewolf type things he does it in the day though i don't know why but um yeah he's called demon cop and i don't even think he's a real fucking cop i don't even remember that he's a, being a cop i think even this film says it's not a cop this was made <laughs> this was made in 1990 and now if you go on imdb or anything like that most actors in crappy movies have at least been in other stuff there is only one actor in this whole movie that was in stuff before it everyone else this is their only film project ever holy crap that's something and the best part is that the opening credits look like they were done with like fucking microsoft paint and <laughs> you know <that laughs> you know you're in for a treat when the same name pops up for director producer cinematographer writer everything is the same person i mean that could be said with like tommy was because the room is amazing that's an amazing movie i love that movie <laughs> and his name is on practically every credit of that movie and rightly so people yeah this the, it's sad because this the guy that did the producing on this in the cinematography has worked on some really great films he's worked on like the blob jay and silent bob um i think he worked on one of the alien movies oh what else he worked on that darn cat from dusty dawn he's done like he's done like hundreds of projects oh he did also work on leprechaun 4 so <laughs> this isn't like his only mistake he worked on Leprechaun 4 I bet he was the guy that did the great big enlarging set. Oh, God, no. But yeah, um. Oh, my God. 
it's really bad. You can probably get you can get this for like eleven pounds, probably cheapest used on Amazon. I got this for three quid somewhere, so I honestly would not buy it for that. Not even as a if you if you're a collector like me, it doesn't have to be a blockbusting film. Usually, cult films are the ones that collectors go for. It's the ones I go for. Um, I wouldn't pay eleven pound for this even as a cult movie. I really wouldn't, and I don't think this even is a cult movie. This is just a shit movie. <laughs> it really is. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna just. There you go. Avoid it. Look at look at this. Look. And that when you when you when you put the um, DVD in and you get your scene selection, it's that right. And then this little demon thing just goes like that every like two minutes. It's just off to the screen. So crap. Ah. Uh, okay. Say goodbye, demon cop. You're lucky I don't snap you. I'd never snap a DVD, but I would totally snap the possessed. I've been so close. Okay, I'm gonna end now. All right, well, that was my um, two favourite and two worst DVDs. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you never watch the worst ones. I hope you do watch the best ones, or at least agree with me on them. But, um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys.